So anyway, what you want to do is you want to make a line that's th three quarters of an inch with a indelible marker all the way around the bucket. What this does is it gives you a line to follow when you're using your jigsaw. And with the jigsaw to get it started, you just put it at the side of the line anywhere around it and just There you have the top portion for your trommel. <clears throat> Alrighty, then for your other bucket, which will be your bottom of your trommel, you want to make a line around the bucket that's at about nine inches. What that will do is give you about five and three quarters inches for the end of the trommel uh, prior to the chute being installed which will come later and again you just get out your jigsaw and uh, set it against against the side of the bucket right on your line Do not discard this. This is going to be made into your chute for loading your material into the end of the trommel. Okay, using the bottom of the bucket that we just cut off, I took my quarter inch hardware cloth and I just opened it up and I rolled it around the bucket just to get an idea of where I want to cut my hardware cloth at. So if I roll it around, and I want to leave a little bit for overlap so that I have a, a nice joint that I can tie up with my uh, wire. I'm going to leave about, instead of, about an inch and a half overlap. And uh, we'll go over that here in a minute. So to cut this, what I'm going to use are my aviation snips. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and take my indelible marker and make a mark on my hardware cloth at that inch and a half or so position so I know where I want to cut it off and then I'll just follow that strand all the way across uh, the hardware cloth when uh, making my cut. So what I want to do here now is I got my aviation snips. And if you don't know this, red-handled aviation snips work for right-handed people. Green-handled aviation snips work for left-handed people. Yellow-handled aviation snips work better for right-handed people but also can be used by left handed people and the yellow handle is straight cuts just so you know these are called left cuts but they work for a right handed person a green handle is a right cut but they work for a left handed person so what I'm going to do now is I've made my mark on my hardware cloth and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use my jigsaw as a, a weight to kind of hold down that one side and I will go ahead and cut right across that strand keeping all my little tabs sticking out because I'm going to use that to help tie everything off once I mount it to my two ends. Be careful when cutting this. These little ends are sharp and can poke you. You may want to wear gloves while doing it. But just kind of run it like if you're running it on paper. If you push and just give little cuts so it'll follow that wire really nice and sweet and 
give you an excellent straight cut across your hardware cloth. Voila, and we have that completed. So the next thing I want to do is I want to find my points of where I'm going to attach uh, my brackets to the spinning axle inside the bucket, but I want to make them so that they're nice and square, lo squarely located, but that one set is located in this configuration and that the other set is offset by 45 degrees. So in other words, uh, if you were to look from one end, it would give it an octagon type appearance. My thought process behind this is it will give more support in the top portion for spinning. Remember that this is a variation of Mike's Trommel, but he uses his for dry washing. He doesn't inject water. I want to be able to bring water in from the bottom end and be able to use it as a rinsing mechanism spray bar to uh, loosen up all the clods of material and everything coming through uh, and take the water and my uh, stuff that's quarter inch or smaller down into my high banker and run it through to recover my gold. So how I'm going to go about doing this is on the bottom of this bucket it actually gave me two center marks and if you run a framing square across it you can see where that goes. They also give you a, a center point location. So if I use two squares and I just line them up I will be able to mark a sweet 90 degree corner right where that belongs. And this is always fun on this one. You could actually use one more hand. Let me see, maybe my uh, speed square might work a little better for that, and it appears that it does. So line this up. Line that up. Boom, got it. Now with that mark being there, I can just straight edge across and that mark through my center and mark the other side. See how that works. Okay, so now I need to offset, like I said, the other set 45 degrees. In order to do that, what I'm going to do is just measure across from this point to that point and I see that that's five inches or just under five inches. So if I make a mark in at two and a half inches from each side, so get my tape measure out and I'll make a mark at two and a half and from here two and a half that isn't quite right. Let me do this again. Maybe I wasn't reading my tape right, which wouldn't be... Oh, okay. We're six and three quarters inches, so that would be three and three eighths inches. It would be center between those two marks. Three and three eighths. Boom. Now I can take this. Again, line it across my center, get my mark there, run the line, and I want to be 90 degrees off that point. So here again, I can just use my square here, get that mark, run it across my center point, and now I have laid out all my points where I'm going to be attaching on my bottom bucket. So now I can take this item here, slip it inside, and transfer those marks to the bucket. See how that works? Pretty sweet, huh? So I can go whammo, whammo, Slip. Oh, and I'm 
and done. So I've been able to use this to go ahead and make my marks inside my bucket. And now I'll transfer those through with my big framing square. Very quick and easy. Just set the bucket on the side of my bench. So I got going here. Locate my mark. And draw the line all the way across. And now I need to do that on each and every one. And that will give me my locations where I put my struts that are going to go to the axle. Another option you have for marking that is to take these inside marks, transfer them to the top, take your framing square on top of your work surface here, and you can also tr just transfer it by using your framing square to the outside rim here of that, and work that all the way around as well. Then you can move that mark inside. This could also be help benefit you though when you're laying out your, uh, your bolt holes here in a little bit. And continue to do that all the way around your part. Now to transfer that mark down to my lip, I'm just going to go ahead and line up my speed square to do that and work that all the way around as well. It's nice to have everything nice and square and, and true. Me being a carpenter by trade, it kind of plays into my trade and my craft that we do it that way. Um, I don't know if it's a little too being a little too anal or not, but it's just I guess that's how I learned my craft, and so as such, I tend to uh, maybe be a little more anal about how I go about marking things and following through on my processes. Had two marks there, so I wanted to make sure I got the right one. things are when you square everything up the one thing you'll find is when it comes to actually putting everything together if you got everything all nice and true and square it sure goes together a lot easier without any major headaches or problems something to keep in mind and there you go so it's marked all the way around and now I can connect the dots so as I'm finishing up and laying out all of my lines across the interior of the bucket, then I'm going to also lay out the locations of where my struts will be fastened from the inside. And what I'm going to use is the fender washers and the nuts and bolts that we use to hold the screen on will also hold my fender washers in place and I get double duty out of it that way and uh, here again this is pretty much how Mike's plan works on his uh, dry wash type trommel to this point it's very similar to his construction except for that instead of having both ends roughly the same length I'm making the top length of bucket longer because that's where I'm going to get the most mixing, I guess you'd say, or washing of my aggregate. Because I'm also going to put some interior paddles inside the bucket to help get things stirred up. And when we make the uh, spray bar, you'll see that it's going to be spraying downward at the screen but at the end there will be a T portion where it's spraying water back up into where this area is and the bars will be turning. There will be water spraying up in there as well as water spraying down on 
the hardware cloth when my aggregate passes over to wash all my quarter and finer stuff down into my trauma or into my uh, high banker. So when I went up to Lowe's yesterday to buy all my goodies, Mike's plan calls for four pieces of uh, this uh, hanger strap at uh, 12 inches each and you cut those down to six inches a piece. Well they didn't have any one foot pieces so I bought a four foot section and I'll just lay out my eight six inch parts and a, a little carpenter's trick is you mark six one foot and then look at your red numbers 18 is also six inches so you mark that then two feet then at 30 you also see on your tape measure six inches so you make your mark there and so on so you don't even have to add it in your head you can just go ahead and using your tape get all of your marks now this strap is uh, let's see what they say this is they say it's 16 gauge so it may not be able to be cut with this type of aviation snip it's you see it's a little too tough for that so what I will do is I'm going to go ahead and get out my chop saw I'll whack those up and then I'll be back with you here in a minute Okay, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have to make a line inside this portion where my wire stops. And I, I want it to just be right about this edge is where my wire is going to stop inside my bucket, my hardware cloth. The reason I don't want to bring it all the way out to the end is I don't want the uh, bolt heads or the machine screw heads hitting here because in that area is where my casters are going to ride to keep this thing where it belongs on uh, in the trommel because since I'm going to have a spray bar coming through I can't put any supports between the axle the spinning axle in this portion so that's why all my axles are going to be in the top and I'm going to use three casters equilaterally laid out connected to some unistrut that's also fastened to my PVC frame to hold this end in place and and keep it from rocking around and keeping it centered where we really want it. So how I'm marking this offset for where my wire is going to stop inside and the reason my wire stops inside on this end is because I want anything to fall out. I don't want it if my wire is on the outside then I'm going to get stuff building up. I want everything to continue outside of my trommel. So I'm just using my coupler that I bought as a guide I'm just laying my indelible pen on top of it and I'm spinning the part until I got it marked all the way around just like that. Now that's going to be the point of where my wire ends inside the bottom part of it. One thing I found that made it easier to get my wire onto my bucket after I cut my bucket because it's somewhat flimsy is I took that bottom part that I'm reserving for my chute that I'm going to feed my material in. I stuck it inside this bucket just to give it some, to firm it up a little bit while I was getting my wire set up. Now I've got the wire all the way th through into this one and around this bucket. And if you notice up close, because the buckets are tapered, you're going to have a little bit of loose fitting wire, but that's okay because everything's going to roll down this way anyhow so that's not a big big deal you're just going to want to make sure that when you go ahead and start mounting your screen to your bucket or your hardware cloth to your bucket that you maintain a, a straight or an equal distant line all the way around here so it stays square on this and then when you bolt all your components together it's going to suck some of that up but it's not going to hurt anything to have a little bit of slop there because like I said everything's going to want to roll that way anyhow once it's all said and done so here's another thing I another way I found that I could use this end ring that I'm going to use up here for my bottom to help me get my wire lined up that's what I did is I just slid it all down and then off my bench I can just measure up and I'm measuring up to this edge right here and it says 11 and a quarter and 11 and a quarter on that side and so now I can just look here and see how my wire is and you can see here my wire sticking through but down here it's just flush so that's probably 
that's telling me it's just a little bit out of whack. So what I want to do is get my wire to look the same, equal distance. So I'll pull this back and just push down on that a little bit more and see what I can get. And what I'm trying to do is just see if this ring will tell me when everything's all copacetic as far as being the same all the way around. And not that my cut was perfect when I cut the uh, hardware cloth, but it's going to be really close that way. Again, like I said, being nice and square to everything makes the final assembly and how it works in the long run better. So that was just another little thing I came across when I was putting it together to help me figure out exactly where I wanted my screen to be. Okay, so the next step in constructing the barrel portion of my trommel is what I do is I use some uh, Vice Grip brand uh, si uh, 6R clamps and uh, just clamp my wire to my upper flange. I'm not going to bolt it up here, but I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just lining it up. And so how I'm making sure that everything is all copacetic again is just taking out my tape and I'm just measuring from my bench up to the top there and that says 31 and 5 eighths 31 and 5 eighths so that should be it's a little high there I'll just tap and touch and we're doing it it's going to move it down down there and all I'm trying to do is just make sure everything is fairly equal equal all the way around my uh, part Three and five eighths, three and five eighths, just a little tap there. I'm making it all nice and true. That's going to spin much better when it's being cranked. Everything will work so much better as long as everything's true. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and start attaching this up here with some of my number eight by 32 thread half inch machine screws with washers and nuts. And how I'm going to do that is I can either use a drill bit or I can also use what is a number 10, eight tech or self tapping screw. The nice thing I like about using a self tapping screw is I can use it that easily and I don't have to change from drill bit to, uh, to a screwdriver because these have a head that's already made for uh, either Phillips or uh, your standard straight drive. And so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and start one place here. And I'll stick, and since my, th since my materials, my screen's on the inside, I'll use the washer on the inside. And you can see that by using that self-tapping screw, it's really a tight fit for this machine screw to go through, which is nice. I like stuff to be snug. So I just go ahead and get it started, stick the washer over it. Oops, missed the washer washer on my machine screw and a nut. And it nice and snug just like that. And I'll continue to do that all the way around. And in my mind what I want to do is do eight fastenings and so here again I'm going to do it fairly close to uh, where they're equal distant all the way around. One thing I can tell you is I can measure that out already. It's off my bucket that I used before. I can go ahead and use that to um, just incrementally st step off around there to get my locations where I'm going to bolt it together. Okey so now that I got all those eight bolts and nuts and washers, machine screws all the way around, I'm going to go ahead 
and inside screw back through my mesh where this rib is about every two inches with one of my self tapping screws. Remember I made that line in there before I put this all in at two inches or so and what that does it gives me a point to put these screws in so that they're going to lay behind here but they're going back through my wire mesh from my hardware cloth and just anchoring it down about every two inches. The reason I'm doing this is because this, this end of the mechanism is only going to be supported by those casters on the exterior so my spray bar can fit inside of here. If I had any type of struts coming from the axle they would be, they would encumber on my um, spray bar which wouldn't be able to stick in there anymore. So that's why I'm doing this. It's just to give it added beef and strength. And one thing you're going to notice is you're going to be stretching your wire a little bit as you do this because the bucket's skinnier as you go down because they're tapered. But like I say, and these screws over time will probably pop out or whatever, but for now it's going to give me a lot more beef. And there we go, and that's done. Okie dokie. So now the next thing I need to do is lay out my holes for where both my struts to my axle are going to go and also what I'm going to use to bolt down my screen. And so I have eight lines so opposing ones will be in the same location and then the, oppose, the opposite ones will be in the same location too. So how I've looked at this is this part here when it's all said and done is going to be cut as into my loading part. It's going to be a, a chute that has to stick inside just a little ways that's open. It's going to be attached to the framework of the thing but the handle is going to stick out here just on the outside of this. This would be where I load it from and it, it needs to come inside a little bit and this would be cut out as you will see later. So what I need to do is I've got to lay these holes out down a little bit to give me that clearance I need for the uh, loading chute. So what I came up with was that I should probably go in four inches, four inches and make a mark and then go down 11 inches and make a mark. That gives me seven inches offset between my two sets of struts, which still allows me, by going down 11 inches, it gives the spray bar that I'm going to make with the T portion, uh, still it's over the solid part, so it's getting the material wet prior to it coming onto the screen, even though over the screened area the spray bar will have water holes jetting out there as well. Now one reason I'm building the basket part of my trommel first before I make my framework is since I varied from Mike's plans I want to make sure that everything works out. So that's why I'm not pre-cutting anything to the numbers he gives. I'm going to figure this out kind of as I go. And, but there will be a complete list of everything that I do. So I'm going to come in, like I said, you know what, instead of four, three inches is sufficient room. So I'm going to mark th in three inches there, and then on my next line, I said I was going to go with uh, 11 inches. So 11 inches. Now that I make those two marks, I can get what's called a story pole, it's a stick that just I mark the ends with. And I'll show you how that works. So here's my story pole and I've made marks at my 3 inch and my 11 inch increments. And so since I got 11 there, my next one here will be a 3 inch. So all I do is just line the mark up with the brim 
and make a mark there. And then go to the next line, go to the 11 inch place. And make a mark there. And so on. All the way around the bucket. gives me the locations to go ahead and drill all my holes. And here again, I'm going to use my self-tappers. Now you can use a drill bit, but like I said, I like using self-tapping screws just on account so I don't have to change back and forth between a bit, a drill bit, and my, uh, my drive. So the, the first set of holes I want to drill are the ones that are way inside there, the 11 inch ones. So they're a little trickier to find, but if I stick my screw right on the location, and it's too tall, wouldn't you know? So here's another little trick. I guess I will have to use a drill bit for these, just on account of how far in they are to get the throw on my tool. Okay, so now I've gone around and I've finished drilling the holes for all of my strut locations as i am got it where I want it for now. So now I'm going to have to design my feed hopper. The reason I need to do this now is I've got to figure out how long to make my interior axle that turns this thing. And so it's going to come out here, even though it comes out here, it's not... And it's attached down here as a bearing surface, it's still not going to have any attachments here. This is all going to be supported by three casters. So what I'm looking at is how can I feed this and have it um, work well for me using a shovel. I need to have a big enough hopper. So what I'm looking at here is, but I need to also have some beef here so that it doesn't fall apart. So what I'm looking at is I'm just looking at, okay, if I was standing at the thing, what am I going to want to do? So I'm just going to sketch out, and I'm going to leave a little bit on the end just so that it has some rigidity back here. And then I can go ahead, and if I need to, I can modify it to make it a little bit bigger down the road. The other reason I want to leave some back on is so that as any spray might be kicking up, that which it may or may not, I'm not sure, we'll see what happens. Will it hold the water and kind of put it back in? And I may decide that I want to also add a small spray bar to this end of the unit as well so that it washes my aggregate down into the trauma and gets it wet. That's a decision I'll make as I go along in the build. So another modification I'm making to Mike's plan is some uh, 2x10 corner joist hangers. Um, these are uh, the idea behind this is I'm going to install this with that same bolt that's also going to hold my strut and my wire together. And the idea is when the water is spraying in there, it's just going to give it some beater action to churn stuff up a little bit better as it's going through. And I'm going to put four of them in along with that 11 inch hole. So it's going to involve me drilling a few more holes to just mount these in. But uh, I think in the long run I'm going to like the benefit that this gives me an added agitation as mixing stuff up with the water as I'm spinning to beat it up and bust things up better. And so now you can see where the joist hangers are installed. I put one bolt top and one bolt bottom. The bottom bolt will also be the location of the uh, uh, strut to the axle as well from the barrel at the lower end. So uh, that's what it looks like and uh, it's 
pretty much all assembled as far as the basket part is concerned. Uh, a rough assembly. Everything's kind of tacked together this way. Now it's time. Now it's time to go ahead and start framing up the exterior framework, the legs, and the rest of uh, the unit. And I'm going to make this so that it's a little different than Mike's again here. I want it to uh, sit above my high banker when I have it set up in the field. And so it's set crossways on it. And so I'm going to make a special hopper underneath it all, after it's all said and done that will deposit material straight from this into my high banker or where it would drop into a bucket if I so wish. Uh, and that's the next step we'll get into now that we have this roughed out. From this, though, I can de determine all my dimensions for cutting my parts for my framework. Alrighty, now sticking with Mike's original plans, I got, went ahead and marked about one inch on my PVC, and this is going to be the front end of my axle, and this will be the pivot point of it in the framework. So I, I'm taking some, and this is per his plan as well, is take some sandpaper and I'm using 120 grit here and uh, I'm just letting it open up in there and I'm just going to start sanding on this and then I'm also as well going to sand some of that off to this line and what I want to do is I just want to make this uh, spin in here not too free but th then again have enough play in it and he mentions lithium grease and the one thing that I'm leery about is getting any type of oil or grease around any of my concentrates uh, because I don't want to float any gold when I'm getting ready to clean it up either in my blue bowl or pan it out. One thing about oil, oil and gold, oil attaches itself to the gold and it will float it. There's no doubt about it, especially that real fine stuff. So I'd be very careful on what I use to lubricate this. So I might choose to just go ahead and, and, and try it without any lubrication. And if so, if I decide to lubricate it, I might go with something like wax, beeswax, something on that order. But stay away from oil.